We want to take a moment to turn to the coronavirus pandemic and remember all of the lives lost in Chicago and the Illinois area. These are the faces of COVID-19. It's easy to become numb. Every single day you hear a certain number of people who died. 5,800 new and probable cases of COVID-19 in the state. 6,800 people have tested positive. 238 people have died. That's the most ever reported in one day. And that's what became the news. Not who died, but how many. Think about this. In January of 2020, when Illinois had its first case of COVID-19, that was national news. Big breaking story. Chicago's first case of coronavirus. Hundreds of patients worldwide. On March 17th, just two months later, Patricia Fison became the first person to die from COVID-19 here in Illinois. Nine days later, her sister died, the first family member. And as cases climbed, more firsts would follow. Now to breaking developments in the coronavirus pandemic. 12 year old boy has died, becoming the youngest victim in Cook County. A Chicago firefighter dies from the coronavirus. Chicago postal worker died this week from COVID-19. The first active letter carrier in Chicago to die from the virus. And then all of a sudden it stopped becoming breaking news and it started to feel normal. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Zike and I want to provide another update. Today, we are reporting 8,828, 6,190, 8,256 new individuals that were diagnosed with COVID for the first time. Those updates became part of our normal routine, but there is nothing normal about this. Just in 2020 alone, we've lost 18,000 Illinoisans. Think about that, 18,000 people. So we wanted to show you the things you can't see in a photo or a number. We wanted to show you the impact they leave behind. We wanted you to hear it from the people who miss them most. I lost my father, Guadalupe Lopez Jr. He was 58 years old and he passed away on November 16, 2020. And then my mom, Maria Lopez, passed away at 56 years old on, on December 4th, 2020. My father was a 911 dispatcher for OEMC here in Chicago for 33 years. And my mother owned an income tax office in Little Village where she did taxes. My mom went to high school in my dad's neighborhood and she said that he would always try talking to her. Um, he had a black car with glitter in the paint and uh, he was a DJ in, you know, in Little Village on the radio. So she was familiar with who he was. And uh, I guess for my dad, it was love at first sight. They were very, very much in love and uh, to the point where I think my mom died of a broken heart when she found out that my dad passed away and uh, now they're together in heaven. They both tested positive on election day and uh, they were hospitalized on November 8th. My father was transferred to the ICU on Friday the 13th, passed away on the 16th. My mom said goodbye to my dad on FaceTime through class, the same way my brothers and I got to say goodbye to him. And it was the same for my mom when she went to the ICU on November 20th. Every bone in my body told me she wasn't coming home. Open the inside, see what the prize is. She would celebrate every new job, every new baby. My mom loved babies. Every engagement, every divorce, you know, people would go to her for so much advice and she was just such a, a good person. And uh, the fact that I'll never see them again. Unanswered text messages. There was a night where I couldn't sleep. I promise you, I text my mom 50 times, just please answer me. I'm sitting in her kitchen right now, just staring at her stove to know I'll never have her cookies come out of that oven again. 
My father loved his job so much. I can't tell you how many messages I've received from not tens, but hundreds of people that thanked me and who let me know that my father is the reason why they made it home to their families after every shift because he was just that good of a dispatcher. He just wouldn't give up his job. He loved it too much. And unfortunately, that's where we think he, he got COVID. It was the most somber Christmas morning. We took the new baby. He's only nine months old. And uh, his first Christmas started off at the cemetery, leaving flowers for my parents. My mom was looking forward to his first Christmas so much. I don't know when my time will come or my brothers or my kids, but uh, I just want people to know that the pain of losing a loved one to COVID. I can't eat, I can't sleep. It's really hard for me to see mothers with their kids, fathers. I don't even understand how I'm supposed to live the rest of my life feeling like this. Everybody loved my grandparents so much, especially my grandpa. He would always help every single neighbor or anyone he could help with anything. He taught me so many things, but the number one thing was always help people when they're in need. Miss you, Grandpa. I miss you more than words can ever imagine. Say hello to Grandma Eleanor and my mom. Please watch over them in heaven. Terry was a great man who loved his family very much and told us all that family is first and to stay close. Anthony Cross was the youngest son of six children. Anthony loved to barbecue and entertain his family and friends. He also loved going to the casino to eat at their buffet and put a few coins in the slots. Anthony will always be remembered for his kind and giving spirit. In his church biography, he wrote, I am passionate about living life without regret or fear. For 40 years, he served as a pastor in Naperville. His greatest mission, however, was as a husband for 40 years and father and grandfather great-grandfather and husband to Carmelita. All the grandchildren and sons and daughters will miss him greatly. James was a father of five children and a grandfather of four at the time of his death. He was an outstanding singer and used music to comfort his soul and those around him. He died in a hospital during the early stages of the pandemic without any family by his side. I never want the world to forget his struggle or forget his name. Arthur was a wonderful husband, father, grandfather, sibling, and friend. He and his wife Laura met at the Ibex Ski Club and they were happily married for 42 years. They had lots of travel and life adventures together. The highlight of his life was when his children Liz and Chris were born. He always said he had hit the jackpot in life when they were born. At just 20 years old, Luis is one of Chicago's youngest victims of COVID-19. His mother, Josephine, and father, Louis Sr., were in the hospital battling the virus at the time of his death. His mother never made it out of the hospital. His friends remember him as genuine and kind. Josephine's family was devastated by COVID-19, losing her and her son, Louis Jr., in less than a week from each other. Her husband, Louis Sr., learned of her passing after he himself had been taken off a ventilator while battling the virus. Her family believes she contracted the virus while working at a local nursing home. We'd be remiss if we didn't take a moment to say thank you to every single healthcare worker who held the hands of COVID-19 victims when family couldn't. And for all the nurses and doctors who never shied away from facing the virus head on. Christine Gratzky worked her entire 38-year career as a nurse. Christine will always be her husband Joseph's hero, too. Gosh, you guys talking? I hear Chris. You feel her? It's, it's, it's amazing. Her being a nurse was everything. She loved it. Her family says she'll be remembered for her work and her strong faith. Talented, loved his job, kind, warm, and loving. 
His restaurant was a staple of the South Side. Instead of sending Christmas cards this year, Seth's friends and family received unique and thoughtfully designed masks created by Seth himself. Shortly after mailing out his masks, the recipients learned Seth was battling COVID-19 on a ventilator in the ICU. He passed eight days later. Kenneth was a loving husband, devoted father, grandfather, and brother. He was a Marine veteran. Kenny had a kind heart and would give or help anyone. He loved boxing and music. His favorite saying was, God knows my heart. He is truly missed. My aunt never missed sending a card, ever. My entire life, 40 plus years, and she never missed a birthday card, Easter, Christmas, or anniversary. Not just for me, but for every single person in our family. She was a very kind, sweet lady, and she is missed. He was a very gifted electrician. He was a kind father and loving husband of 45 years. He's deeply missed by all whose lives he touched, especially his grandchildren. Richard L. Langston Jr. was one of a kind, stand-up father, employee, and friend. He not only protected and loved his family, but he also gave himself to serve and protect the city of Chicago for over 35 years. Richard was reunited in heaven with his wife, Rowena. He was the greatest husband, father, and grandfather. He had a heart of gold and always made everyone laugh and feel welcome. Robert loved his family and friends to the moon and back. He was the type of person who would do anything he could to help even a complete stranger. Jack was a sports nut and had an encyclopedia-like knowledge of sports statistics and history. He was a lifelong Bears and Cubs fan. When I started nursing school at Rush, he took me to the neighborhood and showed me where the Cubs won their first World Series. He sent his friends weekly sports recaps and even held a sports hour in his daughter Stephanie's elementary school classroom. A lifelong learner, loyal and honest, strong and fierce. She dreamed of becoming a nurse. She leaves three children behind. She was an amazing woman who loved her family, her daughters, sons-in-law, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. As a devout Catholic, she exuded love and compassion. She was a kind, sweet soul and will be truly missed. Her husband Joseph died in 2009 of lung cancer. November 25th would have been their 70th wedding anniversary. Harry was such a selfless man. He was a busy man, but always found time for his family. He liked to race cars as a hobby, and he had a great sense of humor. A family man and dedicated police officer. Law enforcement was in his blood, but what he loved most was getting to know his community. Answering the call of duty in times of crisis is second nature to our first responders. Robert Trevilian, who saved hundreds if not thousands of lives as a paramedic, couldn't save himself from COVID. Mario Araujo, the first loss from the Chicago Fire Department, was an 18-year veteran. John Garrido Sr., an Army veteran who spent 36 years with Chicago police and a lifetime of lighting up the rooms he walked into. Sergeant Clifford Martin, proud father, proud Chicago police officer, and proud Chicagoan through and through. Two of his three kids ended up following their father's footsteps to become officers. When he tested positive, his first words were that he was concerned about his family. He wanted to tell me about his children. Tributes paint a picture of a humble man. Even in his final moments, he was heaping praise on others. It was Cliff who said that the doctors and the nurses are the real heroes who are doing God's work. There will be no hugs of comfort for Chicago police. Grief in the time of a pandemic is felt and shown from a distance. Throughout his life, Sergeant Martin cracked hundreds of homicide cases, but understanding the case behind his own death and how he got the virus will never be a case closed. And unfortunately, this is a very, very difficult murderer to trace. Grief without answers makes finding closure for those left behind nearly impossible. 
Sheila Rivera was once a social worker and then a police officer before finding her place as a corrections officer with Cook County Jail. Even among the detainees, her brother said she was respected. Some of the inmates even came forward and told her if there was ever a fight that they would make sure she wouldn't get hurt. Her brother speaks to us from Mississippi, where they grew up together along with their sister, the three of them proud Choctaw Indians. At first, the 47-year-old told them she thought she had the flu. She was sick all week. She tested positive for COVID-19, and things quickly started to spiral. After she was admitted to the hospital, she had a seizure. But she was tough, and they thought it would pass. It didn't. It wasn't until later on in the afternoon that we heard that she had a heart attack. Ultimately, it was all too taxing. In hindsight, her brother says he thinks more could have been done. Because she is immunocompromised for having diabetes, that she should have been protected more and not placed with inmates with you know, cases of coronavirus. We've seen this before, people dying from COVID days after sounding the alarm that they didn't feel protected. Cook County corrections officers like Sheila, Cook County inmates like Nicholas Lee, who died from the virus on Easter Sunday, factory workers like Roberto Escobar. He was afraid to go to work at El Milagro, telling his wife before he died from COVID, he was worried he'd get sick. Sometimes COVID took out coworkers in numbers. Wando Evans died after 15 years at the Evergreen Park Walmart. His coworker, Philip Thomas, was found dead just four days later. He kept telling me he wasn't feeling well. He said he called his doctor. The doctor told him to self-quarantine himself, which I thought was totally wrong because he's a diabetic as well. He called for an ambulance on March 27th and died at the hospital two days later. When Javier Gaines started feeling sick, he was unemployed, afraid to go to the doctor because he couldn't afford it. When he finally relented because he couldn't breathe, he died on the way to the hospital. There's a theme here. Health officials telling everyone to stay home, stay safe, but not everyone can afford that. Don Lupillo was my beloved uncle. He was a raspadero, someone that used to sell raspados or ice cream cones. Um, in Little Village, 26th Street, for more than 15 years. I know more than a dozen people that have gotten sick. And unfortunately, I also know more than a dozen of people that have passed away. It is no surprise that our community has been hit the hardest because we are the community that has essential workers, people that are unable to work from home, people that have to go out to the streets and literally put their lives at risk to make a living. I think when people say you should stay home, you should stay home, that's talking from a place of privilege because not everyone can stay home or work from home. My uncle passed away the next day we had to go to work. My mom had to go and make tamales the next day that her brother passed away. So on top of fear, we really don't have time to grieve and I think that's the toll that is gonna really affect us if we don't take time to reflect as a community. These are our immigrants. Journalist Hamid Allah Khan was a light to so many other Pakistani immigrants in Chicago. Over in Little Village, Samuel Linares moved to Chicago from Mexico to live his dream of opening a restaurant. He died as the chef and owner of La Casa de Samuel. When you look at the trend, the pandemic has hit the minority communities the hardest. Language barriers, distrust towards officials, and the secondary health conditions that COVID feeds off of disproportionately impact communities of color. In April of 2020, 72% of Chicagoans who died from COVID-19 were black, even though they only make up 30% of our city's population. Unique Clay, a black mother who worked for the U.S. Postal Service, had just given birth to her third child and tested positive for the virus. She was sent home from the hospital and died a week later. He knows all too well 31-year-old Unique Clay will never come home to hers again. The family is picking out caskets. Clay was a Chicago letter carrier with USPS for two years. She gave birth on a Thursday and died the next Tuesday. When she went into labor, she, she told me, Mom, I feel like I'm coming down with a cold. 
Her family says Clay was tested for COVID from the delivery room at University of Chicago. Her results came back positive. They say she was discharged with her newborn. Days later, she told her oldest daughter to get her inhaler because she couldn't breathe. When the 11 year old came back, her mother was dead. My newborn niece, she will never get to know her mom. Billy was an activist who would give the shirt off of her back for the Southside community. Husband, father, beloved Pop Pop. Paula was a woman of faith and prayer, a devoted wife, mother, grandmother, and friend to many. She was kind and generous, always opened her home, and made everyone feel like family. Robert has five children. He was a very friendly people person and was always laughing. His main hobby was riding motorcycles and traveling across the U.S. He was well known all across the country. Benny came from humble beginnings in the town of Ballinger, Texas. He loved to laugh and just wanted his family to be happy. He may not have been rich financially, but he was rich in spirit, love, and family. Adrienne was a loving, caring individual who embraced everyone she met. She loved kids and especially feeding folks. She was the glue to keeping our family together and will truly be missed. Denise was the wife of her high school sweetheart, Ronald Pope, for 46 years. Family was everything to Denise. Her hobby was spending time with her six grandchildren, attending every event. Denise leaves behind a large, heartbroken, extended family. She also picked up watching hockey at 57 or so and was an avid Chicago Blackhawks fan. Robert was 99 years old, only 42 days short of his 100th birthday. He was a legend, the smartest man I've ever known. He was an amazing dad, grandfather, uncle, and brother-in-law. Eleanor Bernice Moran, great worker, from her days soldiering bomber cockpits in World War II to managing in the food industry. She was a mom to other kids in the family, but remained a single, proud Democrat. He was a community icon and touched thousands of people's lives. He was born in Jordan and immigrated to the United States at the age of 17 before eventually moving to Logan Square. His passing was a tragedy for the Arab American community as a whole. She worked her way up at the Field Museum, starting as an intern in 2009 and graduating to the role of DNA lab researcher. She was proud to serve as a role model for aspiring African American women in science. Her family has since created a scholarship for aspiring scientists to keep her legacy alive. Every victim was someone's daughter or someone's son. Parents like Nikki Collins Moore waited in agony for three weeks for her daughter Nyla to pull through. She never did. Nyla Moore might have been the youngest of six children, but she was the family leader, her mother told us. She would come up with all kind of fun games for us to play. She just always wanted family there. Nyla was an outstanding student here at Simeon High School, her mother says. One teacher noted her academic achievement and her kindness and thought she would be perfect to assist special needs children. A teacher saw her and how patient she was and how uh, caring and loving she was. On April 10th, Nyla was diagnosed with COVID-19 at Rush Medical Center. She had asthma and had been struggling to breathe. For three weeks, Nyla was on a ventilator. Still, her family was hopeful. But they kept doing all the procedures and saying she was getting better. They saw improvement, they seen progress, and, and all of a sudden it just turned around so quickly. On May 1st, Nyla Moore died. She was 22. Me and my husband, we shot to the hospital, and we got half there. They called me back and said that she had lost her life. And it did all they could do. Nyla is survived by her two-year-old son, Eric, her parents and siblings, and many admirers. Only 22 years old, Nyla is a reminder that young people are not immune from COVID-19. Chicagoans like Ernesto Guzman, who was 12 years old, a kid who loved to play Fortnite with his friends, died before he could become a teenager. Michael Lang, just 18, had just started his freshman year of college. He spent weeks of it in the hospital before he died. High school student Sarah Simmental was only 18 for a month. She died before she ever got the chance to go to college at all. 
And don't be mistaken, some of them were young and quote-unquote healthy, and some did have underlying health conditions. But the point here is that they lived with those underlying health conditions through flu seasons. They lived through the cold seasons. They lived with those underlying health conditions until COVID-19. The first word to describe Olga to me would be she's a fighter. From the day she came to this country, you know, she immigrated here from Mexico and Ever since she was a child, her one goal, her one aspiration in life was to become a teacher. And she did that. She came to this country, didn't speak the language, learned the language, got her GED, got her associates, got her bachelor's, and worked for CPS for 30 years. Up until she got sick, she never stopped working and she loved every day. She always made it a point to advocate for lower income families and neighborhoods. She only taught in those type of neighborhoods because she said that that's where she could make a difference. That's where an education was truly appreciated and she wanted to teach our future. As hard as it is, just thinking of her makes me smile because she was, she, she is, I don't like referring to her in past tense. She is amazing. She is beautiful and she, the love she has for people always, it just exuded from her, you know? And that's one thing everybody says, her beautiful smile and the love in her eyes. She always looked at you with such love in her eyes. Ophelia was a wife, a mother of seven, a grandmother of 22, a great-grandmother of 30, and a great-great-grandmother of four. She gave with a full heart, even when she had nothing for herself, always faithful that God would provide. Ophelia did not have much in that she lived a simple life, but she believed wholeheartedly that her grandchildren were her treasures, and she lovingly referred to them as such. Herbie was a quick-witted man. He was always smiling, laughing, and looked for the best in everyone. He touched many lives and made everyone feel special in their own unique way. He was a former trustee and mayor of Lamont. He will be missed dearly. Arnie Nagelberg of Wheeling was married to Sharon Goldner Nagelberg for 41 years. They had two children, Aaron and Chad. He had a kidney transplant a few years ago and was doing well until COVID. Arnie will be missed by his family and all who knew him. He never had a bad day, or spoke a bad word about anyone. Ricky had a heart of gold, always had a positive attitude, and kept that contagious smile on his face. He read his Bible daily and was a huge Cubs fan. He would give you the shirt off his back if you needed it. He had been with the Chicago Fire Department since 1987. Edward is survived by his wife and two children. These are the faces you see on Election Day. Poll worker Rival Burke helped keep things running in the March election. He died 15 days later. Our mail carriers like Victor Fajardo, who always delivered come rain or shine. Our basketball coaches like Donnie Kirksey, a mentor on and off the court for over four decades. These are the school bus drivers with a heart of gold. Ada Mae Bates extended hospitality to all, her daughters Lynette Ottman and April Bates tell us, and they mean all. The guy came to cut the grass. She would have lunch made for him, always. She would have work done on her house, and she was, instead of him outside doing the work, he was in the house, she was feeding him, and <laughs> cooked cook this big meal. And we like, Mom, you, you know, he's supposed to be working. She's like, oh. How everyone loved Miss Bates' sweet potato pie and coconut cake she made for the church bake sale. And when her husband of more than 50 years suffered a massive stroke, there would be no nursing home. Miss Bates would take care of him. He had to be changed. He had to feed to all that. She did all of that for him. Miss Bates had come to the Chicago area from Mississippi, part of the great migration of African Americans to the North. She made a life for herself in Joliet, wife, mother, grandmother. 
this is the grandkids. Can you see this? <laughs> oh my God, that's a lot. <laughs> and that is not all of them. That It's like 30, 40, 50. And great grandmother who after she retired from her first job, drove a school bus well into her 70s. Ada Mae Bates died of COVID in May. She was 86. She never met a stranger. My dear beloved brother, Louis Rivera, he's a wonderful person with a huge heart and was very dearly missed by so many. He was diagnosed on November 8th, and of course, like so many other people, he was sent home from the facility that, you know, did the diagnosis to recover. And on the 13th, he went to bed and and he never woke up. I did find myself browsing through Amazon, searching for gifts for my siblings. And I thought, what am I gonna get Louis for a few seconds? And then it dawns on you and it's like, I can't. I can't do that anymore. Mary was married for 47 years. She raised three children, nine grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. She loved church and socializing in her retirement. She survived Nazi-occupied Greece and was the first in her family to immigrate to the United States. She was the rock of her family, raising two boys on her own. She loved cooking and spending time with her family and extended family. He was a very loving and generous person to everyone and made sure his family was well taken care of. He just had his 25th anniversary in April. He was taken too soon. Born and raised in Chicago, he founded and ran the nonprofit positive direction for 25 years to help others like him. He spent the last 30 years making a difference in so many lives, he contracted COVID-19 while working at a jail. Days later, his brother found him unresponsive on his living room floor. He was 64 years old. Bill and his wife were married for 38 years. He was a restaurant owner for 44 years. He is a loving grandfather of four and a father. He has missed every minute of the day. We couldn't have a proper burial or a funeral or say goodbye. Julie had a rough life struggling with depression, but I want her to be remembered for her silly and funny side. She loved her family fiercely. Marilyn was everyone's biggest fan and loved everyone she met. She loved her family and loved when there was a house full of kids. She was her grandchildren's biggest fan for all of their school sports. You would often find her sitting on her deck, soaking in the sun and enjoying the wildlife on her pond in her backyard. She said there is never a wrong time for a hug and an I love you to be shared. She has missed so much. Titus Moore served the Chicago Police Department for 14 years. He was the fourth Chicago officer to die from COVID-19. He was laid to rest with honors. Miss Reyes was a warm and kind-hearted person. Pumpkin loved helping others and relished being a CPS teacher. She loved her family and her grandson was the love of her life. God called her home on May 26, 2020, after a courageous battle with coronavirus. Turn back the clock 30 years, God put a challenge in front of Sandra in the form of a near fatal heart attack. Her stubborn, fierce determination saved her that night and kept her going until five years later when she received the gift she needed most, a new heart. With that new heart, she blossomed once again into the person her family and friends loved and adored. The witty, often playfully sarcastic, beautiful force of spirit that let nothing stand in her way. Gary knew no stranger. Anyone he met became a friend and friends became family. He was kind and honest, hardworking and wise. He was known as Pops to his children and Papa to his grandchildren. He had a big laugh and gave the best hugs. She was always someone's number one supporter. She left behind her husband, only daughter, four sons, 11 grandkids, and two great-grandkids. Bob was a caring, kind soul, and his family meant everything to him. 
he will be truly missed by everyone who knew him. Nelson was a good man with a huge heart. He took care of everyone and never said no. It's sad that he lived through a bullet to the head, but a virus took him away from us. God bless you, Big Nell. We will always miss you. Keep watching over us out here. Beto was one of the most humble people you could ever meet. He always had a great attitude and never spoke badly about anyone. He was grateful for life and took advantage of all his days. His wife, two daughters, and two grandchildren were his world, and he was theirs. Ty was a person that knew a lot about everything, and if he didn't know, he tried to figure it out. And he was a helper. He was always willing to, to give you a hand no matter what, um, whether it was clothes, food, fixing your things. <laughs> he, you know, by profession, he was an a HVAC professional, but he was a jack of all trades. So he knew everything. Like, it's just this always some type of remnant of, you know, memory of him. She was a God-fearing woman. She was amazing in the kitchen and could make something out of nothing. Deborah Grant was a loving, kind-hearted sister, mother, aunt, and grandmother. She would help and feed anyone. Deborah will be well missed by all that knew her. I love you, big sister. Rest in peace. Marco DeFranco, a 21-year veteran with CPD, was the first officer to die from COVID-19. He survived by a wife and two children. Daryl was a minister and loved sharing the gospel. He had a big heart, an infectious smile, and laugh. Although he was a big and tall man, he was a gentle giant. Daryl was very much in love with his wife of almost 38 years. He loved spending time with her and he loved to travel. Daryl touched the lives of many. Luther was born March 5, 1912, on a farm in Mississippi. He was the youngest boy of a large family of 10 who enjoyed gardening, reading, and studying the Bible. At the age of 108, he was the oldest person in Cook County to die from COVID-19. Dominic Qualia was a young boy when he and his family came to the United States from Italy. He went from an immigrant boy speaking no English to an entrepreneur. Yep, yeah, absolutely, yeah. American dream. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. Dominic Qualia tested positive for COVID in October and died a week later. The life of the party, his son called him, gone at 65. Anytime he'd walk in somewhere, um, you know, big smiles on everyone's faces. He was joking and kidding with everybody. He was just a, you know, a great person to have around. Connie had a dozen kids who in turn gave her dozens of grandkids. That generation gifted her many more great and great, great grandchildren. Her legacy lives on in all of us. Joseph died too young. He was 79 years old and this virus took his life after a hard fought battle with COVID-19. He died alone in the hospital. Amanda was a wonderful mother of three who loved gardening, crafting, and volunteering at her church. We still struggle with the fact that she died alone and we were unable to have a service to celebrate her life. A proud Mexican-American who loved his job with the Sheriff's Department. He was looking forward to finally taking a break after retirement. He was a proud father, husband, and friend. He leaves behind his 12-year-old son. Alfie had a heart of gold and an undying love for his family, friends, and his dog, Blue. He put forth hard work and immense effort in anything he set out to do. These are just 100 stories, 100 people out of thousands in Illinois who have died from the virus. These were not just numbers. These were our mail carriers, our nurses, our firefighters, police officers, grocery store clerks, teachers, Holocaust survivors. These are the vendors that we see on the streets, mothers, fathers, neighbors, and friends. The pandemic's not over. People are still dying. So until all of this ends, we'll keep doing our part to remember them, the faces of COVID-19.